here we go so this is like the big thing on twitter today and this uh, actually the post was removed what is with people removing their posts like i i don't get this like if you believe in something like why do you, why would you remove it like uh, why would you do this i don't get it any yeah yeah exactly cowards exactly so this is a uh, started off with um i saw this post by grums and it's uh if you disagree with wheelchairs in a magic D, &D setting you are a jackass and should be silent forever and uh, personally i have no problem with wheelchairs if that's your setting but i draw the line in which the evil dungeon conveniently has ramps yes and that's the thing and it's stupid so to like kind of walk you guys through this this is actually an old controversy uh, i remember it actually from a while ago um they limited who could view it well i mean what's the difference like that seems semantics to me saber they didn't remove it they limited who can view it that's the same thing what's what's the difference saber like out of curiosity why why make the distinction because it's effectively the same thing is it not Yeah, ratio to remove their process, Quebec. Yeah, it's the same. How is it different, Saber? Because there are people who can see it. Like who? Because I have a public account. I've never interacted with this person and I cannot see their post. So what is the difference? What is what is the difference? Only those you allow it to likely whoever they follow. So essentially you are not standing by what you're saying. You only want the people who agree with you to see it. Right? So how is that any different? How is that not, how is that not, not a maneuver to make it so that people who disagree with you can't, can see it. I don't get it. What's the difference? What's the effective difference in terms of it being, in terms of it being a cowardly action? How is it, how is it, how is it not? How is it not the same? I'm just I'm just curious why you bring it up. Like what what relevance it has to the conversation. Like in the sense that like you say something like, oh, they removed it so that no one can see it. It is a cowardly move. Like, do you not believe in what you're saying or not? And then you reply with, no, it's it's still it. You reply with they didn't remove it they just limit it who limited who can view it what is the point of that i prefer precise statements that's all i mean it just I, it just seems like semantics to me like you're just I don't understand it. it. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so we're gonna take we're gonna take a look at this. So this controversy has actually been out for a while, and uh, th this conversation has been out for a while actually. So this traces back to this old thing from 2021, where Dungeons and Dragons actually kicked off their first wheelchair accessible campaign. So. This is, uh, I believe it was called, yeah, Candle Keep, Candle Keep Mysteries. They added uh, these like figurines that you could get of uh, wheelchair characters. And they actually made the dungeons themselves wheelchair accessible. Let's make my dungeon easier. <laughs> the bad guy. Uh, actually, I was going to go into that a little bit, but. I have no problems with a character being in a wheelchair, right? Like, obviously, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I, I think it's weird, though, to, like, try to make it. Well, the dungeons are wheelchair accessible. Like, I don't get that. Like, like it, I think the problem is, again, it it has an issue with the suspension of disbelief. And it. It makes you think like wait why would the dungeon why would the dungeon be like that right like it, it takes it takes you out it takes you because it, it doesn't make sense right so it takes you out of of um of the fantasy of being like in D, D right and the thing that I, I was thinking about with this is like well there's multiple things so 
first off, I want to say, uh, I can understand why someone would want to play a wheelchair character in the D&D game. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, personally. Like, I think, I think that's fine. Um, the thing that's weird to me is the idea that, like, oh, well, like, everything else should be played around me, right? So, first off, there is an argument to be made that, like, well, if you're disabled, why would you play a disabled character in the game? Like, you don't have to play a disabled character. But I don't really buy that argument, personally. Uh, because some people do want to kind of live out their life in a different way, right? The thing that... The thing that I don't get is why play a character with a disability but remove all of the aspects that make the disability a disability. Does that make sense? Like, why try to go for that experience of being a character in a wheelchair in the world of D&D, right? Which is not the real world, obviously. And then why would you... Why would you try to make it not the world of D&D? Right? If you're playing a blind character that uses magic senses to be able to see and nullify the disability completely. Sure. You could say that too. But like, I'll just give you a couple examples just off the top of my head, right? Like, if you wanted to play a disabled character, but you wanted to go about it in the D&D setting in a world where like why would they why would a enemy make the dungeon more hospitable you know what i mean why would a dungeon be hospitable to people because the the whole point of a dungeon is that it's not hospitable right so unless unless specifically the villain was in a wheelchair why would the wheelchair why would the the dungeon be wheelchair accessible do you know what I mean? It almost feels like it's just being added again, just to say like, "Oh, look what we did, guys! Like we're so we're so good." You know what I mean? But already off the top of my head, I can think of several character archetypes that you could play that would still have that the whole disabled thing, right? Like you could play a character, for instance, again off the top of my head, you could play an alchemist that that you know they don't have legs. So they created a clay golem that would carry them around. And like in the world of D&D where you can create like almost anything. Like what is the point of making a character in a wheelchair and then not leaning in to the disadvantages of having a wheelchair? And the advantages. Maybe there's advantages. You can carry more shit maybe. You could, you know, maybe... <laughs> Like, you could, maybe you could put stuff on it. Maybe you could make a, a magical powered wheelchair that has rockets on it or something. I mean, sure. Why not? But, like, why not also lean into the disadvantages of that, right? To make it interesting. Why use mundane solutions in the world of creativity? Yeah, sure. What, what Maradine said. You're immune to traps. Said it. Had I. <laughs> True. But, like, you know, like I said, there's, there's a lot of ways that you could go about it. Like, you, there's many many ways you could be creative about it if the idea is to play a disabled character right like why why and i guess this is the problem i have on on the other side of things so i'm trying to be very calculated about how i say things um on the other side of things i don't understand this whole obsession with I have these problems in my real life. I'm going to bring them into a fantasy world. But I don't. But this time, I want the world to revolve around me. Do you see what I'm saying? Like. It's. It's, it's narcissistic. Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of it is that. Hi, Tazito. 
thank you so much for the sub toss so i really appreciate it and again like like it's not that i don't i don't think the uh, the concept is interesting like i i've played characters like this before i think it's the 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 thing that kind of weirds me out is i have again i have this issue i'm gonna bring it into the game and then everything is gonna like revolve around that issue for me in ways that like does it make sense again why why would why would you have a dungeon unless there was some backstory behind it and and, and in fact why would you advertise it as such why would you say this dungeon is wheelchair accessible it doesn't make any sense you know what i mean like the the whole concept of it is like is fine in like an organic way but like it, this really just feels incredibly forced like this like for instance right this let, let's just take a look at these figurines let's take a little deeper look into these figurines right like if you were going to play a character in a wheelchair right why would you do a wheel this doesn't make sense you know what i mean <laughs> like i i don't like why why would you not lead into like the the into the whole all the whole fact of your character getting around the issues that they have you know what i mean and i i just wanted to bring this up because i saw a really interesting post here so here here's one by uh Ginny, who is a, a a vtuber rosa um and it says accepting the existence of magic in a fantasy setting should not be easier than accepting the ex existence of disabled people in a fantasy setting. See, I don't think this is the issue. I think the issue is when you remove that belief because yes, there is magic. So why then? You know what I mean? Why is it in this specific configuration? If you're an adventurer and if you're going to be delving into dungeons, why, sh why would you use this device? Do you see what I'm saying? Again, like, why not play an alchemist that can't walk, but she creates a golem that she rides on top of? You know what I mean? Yes, exactly, Julio. And this was this was a point that Ginny made. So she said, uh, I have no trouble accepting the existence of disabled in fantasy. And I don't think anybody does. Yeah. I do, however, have a hard time suspending my disbelief. When there are disabled people in fantasy settings with magic that can regrow limbs and revive the dead. Uh, I mean, maybe there's other reasons behind it, right? Like, for instance, um, there's a class in um, Pathfinder called the Oracle. And they have a... Uh, they do have, like, a disabled... Op they have disabled options for the Oracle. Because the Oracle gains boons in other ways. Like, they have, like, special things about them that are, like, really powerful. But they're disabled to like kind of balance out like the oracle character and uh it says so i i i think i think it's fine to ha to have a character in, in a magic setting that that can't do this maybe that's like a part of a maybe it's the part of a curse or maybe it's some other reason that they can't have that i think i think it's it's actually fine and, and by the end of the day i'm not your dm or your fellow player but what, what the fuck does it matter what i think the D, it's D, D do what you want and uh this person replies uh with uh i'm not putting a fucking wheelchair ramps in caves and Ginny replies do it trust me have ramps for the entire thing and at the end of the dungeon the boss be chilling at the top of a flight of stairs with no wheelchair access i'm not gonna lie i would do this this would be something i would do if people actually told me that they wanted to run this campaign this is exactly what i would do because this would be actually believable this is what I would do if I was a dungeon, if I was an evil dungeon boss and I knew that a bunch of people in wheelchairs were about to raid me. I would literally do this. So like, this is actually believable. We know you would leave. I've done it. I've done things similar to that before. I would be so sus of a ramp filled dungeon. But, but again, like, you know, and, and like, I, I've played many types of characters before that have issues that people people would consider, you know, um, a debuff, let's just say. And um, I think the interesting thing about D&D... Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, Beep Card Boys. Thank you. The interesting thing about D&D is being able to 
from a distance right like it, i think it adds like an interesting perspective when you have like an issue in your in your everyday life right and you put that into a character and you from a distance have that character experience the things that you experience but again you're looking at it from like a, a different point of view that's not yours and i think that's actually really interesting and really really neat which is why like i i, I can understand a person which is again why i don't really buy the argument of like oh well you know if you're disabled in real life why the fuck would you play a, a character in a wheelchair i can I, I can see why you would want to do that we have like an issue in real life you could make a character and insert that into them and then experience it again but from like a different perspective where it's outside of yourself and it gives you i think a lot of perspective on life to do that kind of thing and um but I feel like the key here is that there are two ways to go about it, right? One, where you one was the way I said, where you have the character have those issues that you have. Uh, Yo, Riku, thank you so much for the sub. Thank you. You have the you have the character that has the issues that you have, right? And you put them out there into into a completely different world, and you get to experience and make different decisions than you would have made in your in your, your you know your real life right and you can experience those things through that character from a different perspective that allows you to understand more about yourself right that's one number two is when people do this but they make everything revolve around they, they want everything to revolve around their character and again i think that that kind of is how I see this in terms of the wheelchair accessible dungeons is like, okay, I have the same problem that I have now, but I want everyone to cater to me about it. You know what I mean? Like, I want everything to revolve around this fact. Like the dungeon has to be wheelchair accessible. It, it's like, what do you really learn from that? 